Hello everyone, and welcome to my Young and the Restless official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Sally and Nick talked about Victor's offer to hire her at Newman in her suite. She requested his judgment. Sally had been certain that she would never again work for a Newman, so Nick expressed his surprise that she was even thinking about it. Working for either Nick or Adam would exacerbate an already tense situation, but Sally acknowledged that most of her motivation had been tied to her ties with them. A lot had changed since then. Nick said, because of Ava. Sally explained to Nick how losing Ava had altered the situation. Nick advised Sally to give herself as much time as necessary before making a choice. Victor's offer, Sally said, was a much better professional move than working at Chancellor Winters. Nick questioned Sally's ability to harm Jill and Lily and whether she trusted Victor enough to take a chance working for him. Sally said to Nick that the situation was challenging for her because she was suspicious of Victor's motivations and didn't want to let Jill down. She claimed that she needed to secure the best deal for Chloe and herself. Nick questioned Sally about her certainty that Victor's offer was a better offer. Victor's offer, according to her, gave them considerably more than the gradual growth at Chancellor Winters. She remarked that it had everything she and Chloe were searching for with a lot greater reach, so it would be a terrific job. Nick claimed that dealing with Victor was never that easy. Sally revealed to Nick that her second driving force was the fact that Victor had personally extended the job offer to her, which meant a lot. Victor wasn't her favorite person, she claimed, and she wished to change that. Because Victor was Nick's father, she was involved in Nick's life, and Nick was significant to her. Sally acknowledged she wasn't thinking about herself, but rather about Nick. According to Nick, their feelings for one another were the only things that counted. Nick reassured Sally that she need not be concerned about Victor. Sally expressed her desire for her and Victor to develop mutual trust. She asserted that it might be yet another experiment and manipulation. Even though Victor was providing a fantastic offer, Nick concurred that there was always a risk that this may be the situation. Victor and Jill were having a video conversation at his house. He told Jill that he had offered Sally a more stable position at Newman Enterprises since it would pay significantly more than working as a contractor at Chancellor Winters. Victor reassured Jill that he had chosen a trustworthy company to carry out the work Sally had been recruited to undertake and that she and Lily would only need to come up with a backup plan. Jill reminded Victor that he had provided her a dossier about Sally's past and had discouraged her from working with Sally because he didn't like Sally. Victor asserted that since circumstances can change at times, he had to keep Sally near to the family. Jill asserted that he wanted to watch her. They said goodbye after Victor grinned. Nate was residing in an athletic club suite. When Audra came, she informed him that she had chosen to deliver his suit herself because the cleaners had just dropped it off. Nate insisted that he had to appear the part. Audra expressed her admiration for how much he had accomplished in such a short period of time and expressed her happiness for him. Audra went. At the Abbots, Diane shared her plan for defending Jebot with Billy and Jack. She claimed that Ashley and Tucker thought they would leave with half the business. She claimed Jack and Billy had to deceive them into thinking they were safe, and they required Ashley and Tucker to see Jack and Billy break up severely in front of everyone. Billy assured Diane that Ashley and Tucker would think of him as a potential ally. Billy claimed that once he got inside, he would learn what Ashley and Tucker had in store for them and then obliterate them from the inside out. Billy concurred that it might work. Jack added that while he was impressed with Billy's ability to turn his life around, interrupting a business and pretending to fail could damage Billy's reputation in the larger business community. Billy insisted that when it came to preserving their father's legacy, he was unconcerned with his reputation. They consented to the plan after Jack insisted he wouldn't let Diane fall victim to Ashley's anti-Diana campaign. Jack and Billy were instructed by Diane to persuade Ashley and Tucker that the altercation between them was justified. Billy asserted it wouldn't be difficult because he and Jack had a history of animosity. Jack claimed that Billy had recently been honest with Ashley, 
informing her that Billy would have to support Jack if Jack and Ashley got into a fight. Billy said that he was worried about Ashley's reactions to Diane's elevation, the ensuing release that had come as a complete surprise to them, and his and Jack's contentious past. Billy claimed that Jack's obsession with Diane was costing the business money. Jack remarked to Billy that promoting a fight was one thing, but being confided in by Ashley and Tucker was quite another. Billy promised to go one step farther and spread untrue rumors about Jebut's future. He promised to make it appear as though he was assisting Ashley and Tucker's business. If they promised Billy a position of authority, Jack wanted assurance that he wouldn't fall for it. Billy claimed that if Jack didn't believe him, it would be simple to be angry with him. Billy asserted that Jack first had negative thoughts about him. Billy wasn't the same person he once was, and Jack quickly apologized and said as much. According to him, doing so would put Billy at risk of slipping backward. Billy gave Jack his word that wouldn't occur. When setting their strategy into motion, Jack emphasized that he had to consider every conceivable stumbling block. Billy concurred. Jack expressed his anger and frustration at how they came to be in that situation. In their future battle, Billy advised Jack to use that and to make use of his outrage that Jack didn't truly trust him. Jack and Billy were warned to quit fighting by Deanne. She said that the fight wasn't intended to be serious at that particular time. She claimed that she was the root of the conflict between Jack and Ashley and that she didn't want another family feud. Billy assured Diane that Jack and he would take care of everything. He claimed that doing so would benefit everyone and they would keep each other in check. Jack concurred. Billy promised to get back to you on the time and location. After Billy had left, Diane said to Jack that maybe the dreadful family argument was over. Jack admitted that he was torn about carrying out Diane's plan. Despite everything Ashley had done, he claimed that he did not enjoy tricking her or manipulating her feelings. The scheme, he conceded, had some validity because it would stop Ashley in her tracks. Jack detested the fact that Diane felt the need to mend the divide between him and Ashley and that she attributed it to herself. He urged her to modify her perspective because Ashley was to blame for failing to recognize how much Diane had changed. Ashley claimed Diane was attempting to be protective out of concern for Jack's safety. Diane vowed to prevent Ashley from harming Jack's family's business. Jack claimed that Diane was an inspiration to him and that he deeply loved her. They made love. Jack admitted to Diane that he didn't want to postpone his nuptials until September. He desired to have her become Mrs. Jack Abbott by appearing before a justice of the peace. He suggested they carry it out right away. At Crimson Lights, Adam mentioned that he'd heard that Nate was having a big day because he was in charge of the Newman ship while the boss was away and was hard at work gaining access to the inner circle. Nate claimed to have heard that Adam desired to incorporate Newman Media into his new business. Since both businesses were under the Newman banner and Adam's plans would make Newman Media superfluous, Adam responded that it was an obvious next step. Nate emphasized that McCall needed to put a lot of effort into being ready to take on Newman Media, since the company is a formidable opponent. Nate asserted that Adam's plans would never materialize. Nate went. Victor welcomed Nate to the property and quickly cautioned him not to become too cozy in the large chair while Victoria was away. Nate insisted he was merely there to hold down the fort and that he would carry out some of the plans he and Victoria had made. Victor expressed his admiration for Nate's passion and determination to succeed, but he disagreed with Nick that Nate was acting in his own self-interest or that Nate posed a threat to the business. He declared that only Newmans will ever lead Newman Enterprises. Victor explained that he wished to avoid any misinterpretation because it had previously caused problems, notably with Neil. In case Nate had any unrealistic expectations for the future, he said Victoria will be working with Nate. He advised Nate to stop believing those fantasies because they were unreal. As he sat down in the large chair at Newman after arriving, Nate grinned. Nick questioned Nate in the doorway, thinking Victoria was still in charge of the family business and Nate was only trying it on for size. Nate claimed that an urgent business meeting had required Victoria and Nikki to leave town.
Victoria had begged him to intervene and take charge, he claimed. Nick wagered that Nate had acted without thinking twice. Nate questioned whether it was proper for him to refuse a request from his supervisor. Nick claimed that Nate will go to any lengths to advance his own desire. Nate claimed he had tried to reason with Nick, but had become weary of being the target of Nick's continual criticism and allegations of ambition and unreliability. What would it take to remove that sizable chip from Nick's shoulder? Nate questioned. He asserted that he had Victor and Victoria's support and that he would not be making excuses for his success. According to Nick, Nate's rise came at his expense. Nate questioned whether Nick was resentful of Victor for forcing him to leave and sending him to work with Adam. Nate had no business worrying about Nick's position inside the organization, Nick said. Nate said that there had to be more going on than just Nick's mistrust of him. Nate claimed that Nick was getting even with Nate because he had lost the favor of his own family. Nate asserted that his drive and desire had brought him to his current position, but Nick's lack of both had put him there. Nate was advised by Nick to stop pushing him. Nick was told by Nate to leave him alone so he could complete the task Victoria and Victor had asked him to complete. Nick left with a smile on his face. Sally walked inside the coffee shop. She informed Adam that Nick had recounted Adam's visit the day before. He claimed to have heard that she had returned from her trip and asked about Coco and Grams. They were fine, she claimed. Sally might be feeling better, he hoped. Sally acknowledged that seeing them had provided some perspective. She inquired as to his motivation for dropping by. No, Adam replied. He claimed that after Nick came, he understood that trying to see her had been a mistake. He claimed he had come to the realization that Sally had not wanted to see him. Sally said she was in bed when she heard Adam calling for her. She insisted that she hadn't avoided him. Why had he stopped by, she inquired. Adam revealed that he had an unpleasant experience with Chance, and that as a result of Chance's remarks enraging him, he had struck out at Chance. Adam claimed that his first inclination had been to find Sally in the hopes that she would soothe him, but he chose to leave rather than press the matter. Sally explained to Adam that while she had been away, she had the opportunity to talk to her family about everything she had gone through with her pregnancy and the difficult decision Adam had to make in having to decide between her and the child. She claimed that after realizing Adam's decision, she had told them how upset she had been with him. She claimed that she had agreed with her family's suggestion to treat Adam more gently. She claimed that the night Ava passed away, they had each lost something. Adam had the chance to start something fresh despite all of that, according to Sally, yet he continued to hunt for excuses to stay angry. She inquired why. Adam wishes he knew since it would greatly simplify and improve the quality of his existence. He declared that he, Sharon, and Nick were getting along well and that they had three months to save two failing businesses. He claimed that Nick and Sharon were tasked with keeping him on the straight and narrow, but he wasn't happy about it. Adam should stay on a straight and narrow path, Sally advised. She stated it might work if he could cooperate with them and not view Nick as the enemy. Adam questioned Sally's commitment to Nick. Sally claimed that it was clear that she cared deeply about Nick. Adam asserted that love and affection are completely different things. Adam questioned if Nick had confessed his love to her. Adam, according to Sally, was heading towards choppy waters. He said sorry. Adam informed Sally he was glad she was talking to him, since he was aware of how sad and angry she had been following the loss of Ava. He claimed that because their friendship was developing, he didn't want to stray from it. They still had a long way to go, according to Sally. Victor had made her an employment offer at Newman, she informed Adam. Adam asserted that Victor never acted without a selfish motive. Victor, he claimed, was undoubtedly upset about the death of their kid and wanted to watch over her. Nick had the same suspicions, Sally revealed. Nick arrived and inquired about the situation. Adam claimed he was looking forward to meeting Sharon. They both should be aware that despite Sally's claim that she had to leave for work, she actually wanted to give Victor the benefit of the doubt and was contemplating accepting his offer after speaking with Chloe. 
She was aware that her employment by Victor caused them to feel conflicted, yet she needed a change of concentration and direction, and it was the right choice for her. Nick expressed his support for her choice and inquired as to whether Adam had any influence on it. Adam had expressed Nick's concerns after Sally had asked him for his view, Sally informed Nick. Sally claimed that they had both assisted her in making a choice, and she thought it may be excellent for both her professional and personal growth. Nate was on the phone with Victoria at the athletic club when Billy walked in and overheard Nate tell her he was holding down the fort. Billy then put a stop to the conversation. Billy said that he had overheard Nate's call and that he had been pleased by Nate's ability to balance work and pleasure when it came to Victoria. Nate mockingly retorted that although Billy had succeeded in doing the same with Lily and Chancellor Winters, Billy had objected to him for doing the same. Nate insisted there was more to Billy's statement that he had merely made a comment. Nate added that because Victoria was such a fantastic person, he could understand Billy's sense of loss in relation to her. Billy agreed and said that he would always look out for her because she was the mother of his children. Nate asserted that Victoria didn't require protection and that anyone who believed she did required pampering didn't know Victoria at all. Nate went. Audra entered and raved about how amazed she was at how easily he had seized the reins after Nate had returned to Newman and had just finished his call. Although Nate insisted it came effortlessly, the day had not been without its challenges. He claimed that Nick had dropped by and wasn't aware that Nate had been appointed in charge. He claimed Nick was still resentful and hostile to him. Nick might find Nate's quick ascent to the top annoying, according to Audra. Nate informed Audra that he had spoken with Victor, who had made it obvious that a non-Newman would never succeed Newman as CEO. He pledged to make the most of his time there and to keep his word to Victoria. He declared his intention to become Victoria's go-to guy. The following phase, according to Audra, was to establish his bond with Victoria and further things. So what do you guys think about this update? Let me know in the comments below. However, don't miss subscribe my channel. And if you like my videos, please press like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.